Uh, good morning, Internet. Uh, today, I'm just going to do a follow-up video on um, on part two, I guess, of my website from scratch. And in this one, I'm just going to demonstrate to you using mix-ins uh, and dynamic variables to generate HTML. Uh, so basically, we have our website here. This is the start of our website. And... Uh, I would like to, for example, in this case, uh, put YouTube videos or online appearances into my site, have them all listed uh, one by one statically, I suppose. So they'll be generated on the back end by the server uh, rather than dynamically at the moment. But um, what we have here in our file source slash content is a variety of mix-ins. So we have this, the class has published time, which contains the slot published time, has title, title, has image, image, has URL, URL, has description, has description. And then down here, we have a um, we have a generic function called to HTML. And the important point here is it uses the method combination program, which walks uh, through the applicable classes in the class hierarchy and just calls every single method rather than only according the most applicable one. So uh, in here we have a few standard uh, like fallback methods I guess for each mix-in. You can see here we have a special or dynamic variable here called width for, uh, for to, uh, applying the width on a per method call uh, basis. So I'll demonstrate that later, but um, I can show you how this would work. So we def class. If we actually we'll just do it properly. Let's go to online. We will def class our appearances. We will call this one YouTube, um, and then its content has URL. It doesn't have an image. It has a URL. It has a title and it has a description. Oh, and it has a publish time. We want to put this last, but it doesn't have an image. Okay. Now we have our online appearances for YouTube appearances. So we're going to create a parameter up here called YouTube Appearances, and it's just going to be a list. And then we're going to create a function called Defund New YouTube, and that will take the arguments title, publish time, URL, description. Now we'll push new, uh, make instance YouTube. Description, description, publish time, publish time, URL, URL, title, title, to YouTube appearances, and we are going to use the test um, title, I guess, we'll use uh, string equal on key title. That's new YouTube. Let's quickly make a macro to wrap that. Uh, push up new YouTube. Oh, float. Now let's take, let me go and hunt down my, a YouTube video of mine. So we have the common list of characters one. So we have new YouTube, title, uh, publish time, 
was the April the 8th. So I have in here somewhere, I have here a time helper, note, time, so gen stamp, day, month, year. So in here, we're gonna turn publish time into apply gen time, no, gen stamp, sorry. And publish time is now a list. Characters, um, publish time. So we zero, 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 day, month, year. So in this case, that will be uh, 28th of the 4th, 2022. That should work, hopefully. <laughs> and the URL is this. And then for the description, I will literally just grab the description from the video. Um, what is wrong? It's not of type function. Ah, yes. So I need to make this a function, lambda, and we will take the, uh, in this case, YouTube. We will declare ignore YouTube, oh, ignore of all, locally. Okay, so now we have this. Now if we go to the, we'll see, you'll see how the mixins work because if we go to YouTube appearances, we take this instance of YouTube and we just call 2HTML on it immediately it's using all of the methods without me having to uh, have it specify anything uh, differently um, but we do want to make a top level to HTML which would be to HTML I think so we've got content so in this case content YouTube oh no, this is not what we want to do. We want to def method display all YouTube. This does nothing. And then it will do spinneret with HTML. We're gonna put a block in, so we're gonna have div class YouTube appearances and then map C to HTML. Uh, what did I call it? YouTube appearances. Now if we go to home two, and so we change this to display YouTube appearances. Oop. And now if I go to home page two and try it, yes, that has worked. I will show you. Here, Oop, here, you can see here is our first listing, and then our second one, or oh, not our second one, this is the full HTML, starting with the wrapping class, or the wrapping div that we put in here. So it starts here, and then it maps through displays each one individually so if we add in if we want to add a new YouTube video let me go find one uh, where did I hide it I have hidden there it is let me grab another one we have new YouTube this one was on the 21st of the 4th, 2022, and its URL is this. And its description is this. Now, if we go back to 
the home page and just refresh, we now have a second one. Now, of course, um, because we're using we're using this entry function display or YouTube, we could uh, say sort the YouTube appearances by local time. Um, now, however, if we were to wish to use an image, for example, I was going to show you how we would uh, work with content that has images because image uses a dynamic variable called width. Uh, so if we add to the image, let's just go to online. We'll just add a default to it. We'll have a ha we'll have has image, um, which, but we'll make the image in it form a just a generic we'll just give it a generic image does this work yeah this is my YouTube URL the link to my YouTube and then um, so now now it has an image we need to go to the home page again something broke what did what broke to HTML ah yes now you'll see um so now we have to, to create this dynamic variable so we have width we're gonna just make it a hundred and then we're gonna declare width as special oh wrong way around special width And now each one has the image, it, the same image in this case, because these don't actually need an image. Um, now, if we want to display uh, local time, so we have the timestamps that we're importing. So if we go to uh, YouTube appearances, each one has a timestamp like the publish time we can export we could export the publish time or apply default methods for the publish time using um using uh local time but i wish to make a separate video on local time because it's an exceptionally useful library and maybe then when we come back to this next time you will have seen that i've used local time but here, the important point here is I'm using a special a dynamic variable called width that uh, means every time I wish to call to HTML, I can change the value that is used for the width here. Rather than, I mean, I could pass it as an argument. I could have like an args list if I wanted and just extract the args list from to HTML. But in this case, I thought. I use dynamic variables and then I could write a macro uh, for easily configuring certain variables. Um, there could be, for example, say the width is here, there could be, I I'm just trying to think of another example where you wouldn't use width, but you would, well, for maybe you wish to like choose how something is laid out. So in this case, you have if it's a URL, uh, it will put the it, <laughs> if you have a URL as well. So if you have has URL, then it um, uses that as a href, so and then puts the imp so it makes the link clickable. Uh, I think that's this one. So now we can click on the link. So, but you could also have that as a um, as a new special variable, you could be like uh, become clickable or something. And then if you set that to T, then it would uh, do what I've done here with the generating the href. Um, it's quite a useful feature for overwriting certain functionality. But I believe there is a performance cost to working like this. Where I'd probably be better off passing in like a plist as an argument or an object 
as an argument to provide different behavior depending on uh, the type of the object. Anyway, hope you found that interesting and not too rambly. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.